Alrighty, uh, welcome to video 4B. This is going to be the final video in the series. Uh, this is setting up a, a VPN client on the Linux machine as an example. One thing that I do want to say before I get started on this video is that uh, the previous video, 3B, would work for both Linux and Mac OS. That's not the case here. This will only work in Linux. Uh, but it's probably a very simple process of uh, downloading and installing an open VPN client. You could probably find another tutorial somewhere else for for Mac OS, but I just don't have a Mac machine to test it on, so I can't really give much for that. Now, uh, I said this in the uh, video 4A as well. Uh, I can't make detailed instructions of every single platform that uses an open VPN client because they're different with everyone. So I've installed this on Windows, I've installed this on Linux, I've installed this on Android. It's different on all three. So, but thankfully this is the easiest part. So it, it's like with Android it was literally an issue of I have the file so I download the client program so I uh, install, so I uh, from Google Play I download open VPN client from Google Play and I load the file. I, I mean, I transfer the file to my phone first, and then I hit connect, and that's it. Uh, so I, I really only want to make some example videos. Uh, the reason why I was originally only going to do an example video just for Windows, but with Linux, it's a little bit weird. And this is this again comes from uh, uh, Digital Oceans tutorials. I mean, almost all, almost all the information from these videos just comes straight from Digital Oceans tutorials, and the work that's done in the scripts also comes from Digital Oceans tutorials. So, the uh, uh, so since this is just since Linux is a little bit weird, and maybe some of the others are a little bit weird. It's not hard. It's just it's got some things that are kind of odd about it. So, uh, you can see that we left off exactly where we were before. I'm going to go ahead and exit the XFTP because there's no point in doing it. It's actually already had a broken pipe because I had to close the virtual machine and reopen it, so it's not surprising that the connection is broken. Um, and we can go ahead and just exit the terminal. It's not really necessary. So this is the file that we just downloaded, client1.ovpn. Oh, we actually will be reopening that terminal. I forgot about that. Um, so... The thing that's kind of weird about this is you have to go down and uncomment a couple things. So this is actually stuff, so these things right here, these three, ca.ca.crt, ca space ca.crt, we're going to have to uncomment that. And it doesn't matter what, uh, what text file, what text editor you use, um, you're going to have to uncomment those for those three lines. I don't know why that's different for Linux, but for some reason it is. So we make that change and we save it. Now that we've uncomment uncommented those lines and saved the file, we want to go ahead and bring back up the terminal. First thing I need to do is actually install the VPN client. So sudo apt-get install open VPN. It's apt-get because I'm this is Ubuntu, this is Ubuntu operating system. Uh, so it's going to be different if you're Oh, that's the wrong password. There we go. Uh, it's going to be different if you're on a non-Debian uh, based operating system. So you just go ahead and down and use whatever package manager you have to download and install it. Now setting up OpenVPN. Now, it's installed, so we can go ahead and use OpenVPN, and but we want to go ahead and specify the, that config file that we just got. So OpenVPN config client1.ovpn, and it's going to start connecting, and it failed. Oh, it failed because you need to do user, uh, super user privileges. Super OpenVPN client config, not client config client1.ovpn okay now this is something that's a little bit odd this, this is part of what was odd so the first odd thing was that you had to uncomment those lines which you don't need to do in Android you don't need to do in Windows I don't know what that's for but for some reason you have to un uncomment those lines uh, the second thing is that 
It looks like it's hanging right here. It says initialization initialization sequence completed. It's, but when it says initialization initialization sequence completed, that actually means oh, it's working now. So, uh, so how do I know that it's working? So how do I know it's uh, doing anything at all? Because for all I can tell, it could just be sitting there and it just says something and doing nothing. Well, the way that I know is I can go to see. I wrote this down. There's actually several different websites where you can use to get your uh, IP address, your public IP address, but there's this one's just quick and simple. IPlocation.net find IP address. So this is going to tell me my IP address. It says it's 162.243.216.89. Well, 162.243.216.89. So that means that it, this IP location .net looks at me and thinks that I'm at this location, at the location of this VPN. So that means it's routing that VPN to me through that. All right. Well, thank you for watching. That concludes this video. And I do want to reiterate that it's going to be different. The client is going to be different for every platform, but it's going to be pretty easy. Linux is the only one that I've seen so far that's just kind of weird. Uh, and a lot of that's just because Linux involves a lot more command line than most other platforms. That's a good thing for the record. All right. Thanks for watching the video, and um, I hope this helps. So now you can use that to test to make sure that it's... Uh, hey, hey, there's a sonic screwdriver. That's not a sonic screwdriver. That's a flashlight. Weird. That's a neat flashlight. I